For them. Now, we've got all these implants that we're using, but I think it's nice to put things into perspective and get an idea of where we are in terms of where did the implant start off. So the implants we now use are what we call fifth generation implants. And silicone implants were first invented in 1961 uh, by Cronin and Giroux. So that's Thomas Cronin and Frank Giroux in, in America. And there's an urban myth. I don't know if it's true, but it's a good story that uh, Thomas Cronin, when he was a young doctor, was asked to go and fetch a, um, a packet of blood from the blood fridge for transfusion for a patient. And as he was walking with the, the bag of blood, he felt the, the, the bag of blood and thought, hmm, this sort of um, texture and feel would give a good breath, make a good breast implant. And that's how he invented the breast implant. And Dow Corning uh, produced the first set of uh, breast implants. And in 1962, the first breast implant with the breast implants that we have now um, were used. And interestingly, the first model was called um, prosthesis model 1963, even though it was used in 1962. The story of breast Enlargement though, goes way further back than that. In 1895, a surgeon called uh, Vincent Cerny um, did the first known breast augmentation for one breast, which was smaller than the other breast, so breast asymmetry. And he took a lipoma, which is a fatty lump from the lumbar area, from the back of a patient, took it out and then transposed it to make a larger breast on the smaller breast side to match things up. Since then, people have used a wide variety of things to enlarge breasts with catastrophic results most of the time. People have used ivory balls, they've used um, balls of string, they've used liquid paraffin, liquid silicone, which caused a whole heap of problems. So in 1961, when Cronin and Giroux invented their silicone gel in a silicone uh, bag, it actually revolutionized uh, breast implantation. That was the first generation and they were uh, teardrop shaped and they had something called a Dacron patch at the back to prevent the, um, the implant rotating. And then they went on to generation two, which they made, oh, let's make this a bit, um, little bit, bit more natural like. So the, the breast uh, shell, the implant shell was made a bit thinner. The, the gel was made a bit thinner uh, as well. These, however, cause increased risk of breast um, implant rupture and such like. And this went on, unfortunately, to the downfall of Dow Corning because there was a class action suit saying, oh, these implants were rupturing and then the, uh, the silicone gel, which is a bit more free-flowing, was getting to different parts of the body, not limited to the breast. And then uh, patients started to say we were getting connective tissue disorders, back pain, arthritis, etc., etc., which you were attributing to the silicone gel. Because of this class action suit, so Dow Corning actually went bankrupt, quite interestingly. And the Federal, uh, Food and Drug Administration in America labeled breast implants as a class three um, uh, product, and they essentially were stopped from being used. And this is why saline implants were used so heavily in America, even though they give a much inferior um, outcome because saline tends to leak out of the, the the um, uh, implant themselves and have more rippling, etc., etc. We've never stopped using uh, uh, silicone implants in the United Kingdom, um, and we've not really had a problem with them. Large studies have shown that all those um, connective tissue disorders and all, uh, such like were not proven. The um, the polyurethane also uh, had a bad rep where the, uh, the second generation used polyurethane implants, but there was a, a, a thought that the, the polyurethane which degrades and comes out of something called toluene diamine and is excreted by the body may have been causing uh, breast cancer in mice. It has never been shown to cause breast cancer in human beings. And the FDA now thinks that the chance of that is so infinitesimally small, it's considered absolutely safe or considered safe um, to be used in human beings. And there's, there's really no problem with that. 
Uh, the second generation uh, implants uh, involved better, um, sorry, the third generation, the fourth generation involved better shells, a bit thicker, uh, viscous fluid. And now we're on to the fifth generation, which has what you call a gummy bear implants. So if the implant is even cut or ruptures in the patient, it doesn't go anywhere. It has a consistency of gummy bear. So gives you a little bit of history of where we came from, where we are now. So breast implants now, very good shell, chance of rupture very low, even if the rupture chance of the, the silicone going anywhere is very low indeed. And that, uh, dear viewers, is breast implants in a nutshell.